product manager at Block Native, and today we are going to talk about ERC4337 user operations and how to use the Block Native bundler and our Mempool Explorer to get your user operations on chain and watch the real time status changes uh, through our Mempool Explorer. So to get started, we're going to leverage the StackUp documentation and examples. Uh, if you want to learn more about StackUp and their documentation, you can go to docs.stackup.sh. But I have forked their ERC4337 examples, so I'm in my GitHub repository here. And to start out, I am going to clone this. So let's open up a terminal. We'll do git clone that URL. And this now has pulled down these ERC4337 examples. So you can see it looks like all the files are there. Great. And so let's walk through the readme together. So the first thing we need to do is uh, yarn install to get all of our independent our dependencies. And the next thing is we need to do a yarn run init. And what this is going to do is this now added in this configuration.json file. So if we open that up, we can take a look to see what it is. If we go back to uh, the readme here, it goes walks through each one of these, but I will walk through that with you right now. So the bundle URL, this is where you are gonna leverage the block native bundler. Uh, you need to send your user operations to a bundler in order to get them on chain, and we'll talk more about that in a, a little bit. The second thing is you'll need uh, an RPC URL. So this could be you know, your own node. This could be Infura. Uh, I'm going to use a, a free Infura account for this demo. And then we have our signing key. So the examples uh, repo here just randomly generates a signing key for you. The signing key needs to be this length, but the signing key can be anything you want. Uh, and so I'm actually going to prove that by changing the signing key that they gave us. So I'm going to delete these first eight. And so I've added in beef babe here. Uh, and the entry point, so this entry point contract is a standard entry point across all networks. So today we're going to be working on the Go Early network, but this is the same address for, for any network that supports ERC4337. And the simple account factory is you know how the actual smart contract gets constructed uh, when you first create your smart contract wallet. And that is through Stack Up. So let's go and grab our bundler URL. So I'm over at docs.blocknative.com. I'm in 4337 tools, block native bundler. I'm just going to copy that over, go back to my terminal. Let's get rid of this one. I'm going to drop that in. And then I also need uh, an Infura URL. So I'm going to get rid of my RPC URL here, add in the Infura one for go early. All right, we are good to go. Let's save this. And now let's go back into the examples readme and let's make our first user operation. Actually, before we jump into our first user operation, let's grab the address. And so when we chose our signing key, remember our signing key can be as long as it uh, adheres to the the length there that it's been that it, that it gave you, it can be whatever you want. Um, and then that signing key can deterministically provide you with a public key. And so in order to find out what that address is, you just run this simple yarn run simple account address, and there it is. So this is my smart contract wallet. Nothing has been done, and so if we go over to go early ether scan, we can type in this address, we can do a little search for it, and you can see, you know, nothing, nothing's happened. Uh, there's this wallet hasn't been created yet. There's no transactions. There's no ETH balance. And so in order to get started, we do need to have an ETH balance in it um, unless the smart contract you know, app or platform 
provides paymasters. We'll talk about paymasters in another video, so I'm not going to go into too much detail there. So for these examples, you do need to have some Ethereum in it. And I am going to now send myself some ETH, some Gorilla ETH, to this address. Back on Gorilla Etherscan here, and we can see that I have now received 0.1 Gorilla ETH from another account that I own. And now we can go ahead and try our first user operation. So our first one, we'll keep this very simple. And we are going to do a simple transfer. I'm actually just going to transfer right back to the address that uh, I received the Gorilla ETH from. And when we do that, what's exciting is we can now use Mempool Explorer. And so if our Mempool Explorer, it's explorer.blocknative.com. And I'll start from the defaults here. This is what the, uh, the default homepage looks like. And everything that you do at Block Native through our Mempool API is address based. And so right here, you would type in any address you want, uh, any address you want to start receiving transactions on. So this could be a, a smart contract, it could be your wallet, it could be a token address, it can be anything you want. And so for this example, we are going to watch all ERC4337 entry point transactions. And so this is the entry point address. And if this address shows up anywhere in the payload, then you will see that payload show up right here on the right side of your screen. So once I make my transaction, we will be able to come back here and we'll see the pending and confirmed events in Mempool Explorer. So let's give it a try. So I'm going to copy this command, go back to my terminal. And so I need to put in a to address. And my to address is going to be this one. And I need to put in an amount. So I'll just do a small transaction here. And when I hit enter, what's going to happen is the uh, program will construct your user operation. It'll send that user operation off to the bundler and the bundler will package that up into a transaction, a normal transaction, and it will send that to the entry point. So let's try it. And the user operation will get created. We'll, sh we'll see it down here. It's been sent off to the block native bundler. The bundler is creating a transaction. Let's move over to Mempool Explorer. So we can see the pending event and the pending simulation came in and we should be able to see the confirmed as well. So there it is, it's confirmed. So let's take a look at this payload here in Mempool Explorer. And there's a few things that I wanna point out. So one, this is a normal transaction, just like any other transaction that happens on the network that has a transaction hash, it has a from, a to, and then it has a whole bunch of uh, other information like what methods were called and what was the gas price, et cetera, et cetera. But what's interesting here is my address is not the from or the to. So this from address is the block native bundler and this to is the entry point contract. So what happens with the user operation is it's just this intent layer. So I constructed this, this payload that is meaningless to the Ethereum virtual machine unless someone does something with it to make sense of it. And so that someone is a bundler. So the bundler receives these user operations. It packages it up into a real transaction where it is the from, it's like a proxy EOA. It is the from address and it's, it sends it off to the entry point and the entry point executes this entire input here. And so if we take a look at what that input is, the first thing you'll notice is this method name handle ops. So every single um, user operation the method name will be handle ops, or there's actually an, another one as well, which maybe we'll talk about in another video. But for this purpose, it'll be handle ops. And inside handle ops, there's a parameter called data. And so this call data can then be further broken down into a bunch of sub calls. And in our smart contract wallet, there is a method name called execute. And what execute does is it uh, executes any sort of smart contract functionality that 
your transaction, your user operation is trying to achieve. In this simple example, we were just trying to do a transfer to uh, another address that I own here, and we're just sending a 0 0.01 ETH. And this, this func parameter is just 0x because it's just a simple transfer. If we were trying to do some sort of smart contract call, you know, this would be more call data on exactly what we were trying to do. And you'd see more sub calls on what that is. And so in our next example, we will show exactly that. But first, I want to look at Etherscan. So now we're back in Go Early Etherscan. Now I hit refresh. What's interesting here is... There's no new transaction that showed up. So again, I want to emphasize that a transaction that shows up for an address means it's in the from or the to, but that wasn't the case for uh, this user operation. Remember, the from is the bundler and the to is the entry point. But if we click on this internal transactions, then there it is. Your smart contract wallet shows up in the internal transactions. And inside the internal transactions, there's a whole bunch of transfers and uh, interesting activity between the entry point and the bundler and you know potentially other smart contracts but right here in the middle you can see this is what I actually was trying to achieve it's this 0 0.01 ETH from my smart contract wallet to this other address and what are these other two transfers so this first transfer you know this is the first transaction that I made and so if we actually look at the gas used wow that's a lot of gas used why because this, this was the first transaction, uh, and so this was the initial creation of my smart contract wallet, and that cost a lot of gas. And because it was my first interaction with the entry point contract, we had to deposit some Ethereum into the entry point contract so it knows that this smart contract wallet exists and that I can now pay for gas uh, for any interactions I want with the entry point contract. And then this last transfer is actually... Uh, sort of a refund to the bundler to pay the bundler back for all the gas um, that it had to do in order to make this user operation happen. So the actual transaction fee was 0 0.08, but the bundler got 0 0.09, and so it made a small quote unquote profit because uh, you know the bundler has a lot of has to do a lot of work in computation and simulation in order to make this happen, and so. That is how it's comp compensated. Uh, it's compensated through a uh, gas fee, an extra gas fee in a user operation. Okay, let's move on to the more interesting example here, the Uniswap approve and swap exact ETH for tokens on Uniswap v2 router. And so what I am doing here is normally if you are to interact with Uniswap, you need to approve your EOA uh, you need to approve the smart con the the router itself that it is allowed to transfer some tokens from your EOA and make a swap for you. And so this actually requires two transactions. You need to do an approve and then a swap. But with user operations, you can do as many transactions in one user operation as you want. And so that's exactly what this example is going to show. It's going to show how you can do both the approve and swap in one user operation and therefore in one transaction. So I'm going to copy this over, and we're going to go back to our terminal here. I'm going to drop that in. And we are going to need to add in the token address, the router address, the WETH address, and the amount that we want to swap. Here for my Uniswap approve and swap, I have the token address that I'm trying to swap for. So this is the Uniswap token on GoEarly. I'm going to use the Uniswap v2 router to make this swap, and the WETH address on GoEarly is right here. And I'm going to try and swap 0 0.01 ETH for as much Uniswap token as I can get. And when I hit enter, again, we're going to create a user operation. That user operation will be sent to the Block Native bundler. Block Native will turn that into a regular transaction and get that confirmed on chain. And once I hit enter, I'm going to move over to our mempool explorer. So I'm going to start listening for events again on the entry point contract. And I want to see the pending, the uh, pending simulation, which we'll get into in a little bit, and the confirmed transaction. So here we go. So I've hit enter. There's the pending. There's the pending simulation. And in a moment here, we will see the confirmed event as well. 
All right, there it is. So let's take a look at this payload. I'm going to pause it. So again, uh, as we discussed on the prior example, the bundler, block native bundler, here's our address, and they are the from, the two is the entry point. And the first thing that happens is this handle ops gets called. So our user operation, our sign user operation is here with all the parameters. And the most important one or the interesting one here is the call data. And this call data is uh, going to be interpreted by our smart contract wallet. Uh, so our smart contract wallet is here and it calls this execute function with this long call data here. And then this long call data here gets broken down into execute batch because remember this example is an approve and a swap. So the approve happens on the WETH address and then the swap, I want it to uh, end up swapping to Uniswap token and sending that back to my smart contract wallet. And so here is the call data for the approve and the call data for the swap. And so if we scroll down even more, we can see the approve here. So we are approving the Uniswap router that you are good to go to swap this amount of ETH. And here is the actual swap itself. So we are swapping from WETH to Uniswap and we are sending it to my smart contract wallet. Quick note here, I did hard code in the amount out min as zero. Don't do this on mainnet, you will get sandwiched, but we're good on go early to do this. Um, and so that is the fully decoded input here of this transaction. And again, this transaction is from the block native bundler to the entry point calls handle ops, which calls our smart contract wallet execute function, which calls the execute batch to do multiple function calls. And this is an approve at the top and a swap exact ETH for tokens uh, as the second call. So let's move up a little bit and look at the pending simulation. So at block native, we simulate all pending events in real time and give you a pending simulation. So you can, you'll see that the pending event is the first one. And we will take this pending event. We will also simulate it against current block state and we'll show you the internal transactions and net balance changes of all the tokens involved or all the addresses involved. And so inside the internal transactions, you can see what is actually happening at the uh, as it gets executed by the entry point contract. And so it's showing you all the different uh, method names and things that are called along the way. And if we scroll down a little bit, we'll get to the net balance changes. And what's interesting about the net balance changes is we'll look at all the addresses involved and we will show you exactly the net balance changes of the ERC20 tokens that happened on that address. So again, this is my smart contract wallet. We sent uh, some, we sent 0 0.01 ETH to get swapped for as much Uniswap as we can. But we also paid gas uh, and we paid gas to the entry point contract. And so that is why this is not 0 0.01 exactly. Uh, and then this is the amount of Uni token that we got in our smart contract wallet. And we can verify that by going over here, hitting refresh. So here's that transaction on Etherscan, which we can see and we can see that we now have Uniswap tokens. Go back to Mempool Explorer. Uh, if we scroll down here, here is the entry point contract. So this is how the entry point contract net balance change uh, changed. Here's Uniswap V2 router. It lost you know, this 0 0.01 WETH. Uh, here is the WETH address and it gained that because I had to convert ETH to WETH and I'm not sure this might be the liquidity pool, uh, the WETH uni liquidity pool. So it gained you know, 0 0.01 WETH and lost this much uni. Um, so that's kind of our, our pending simulation events. And that was the final example that I wanted to show you. So I appreciate everyone watching. Again, you can find this example on my GitHub, uh, github.com slash Marsha BL, 
uh, ERC 4-3's seven examples. Um, I've made a PR into stack up, so hopefully this will just be added into the stack up examples as well. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you next time.